Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my Arduino video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to show you how seven segment displays work, and I'm going to create a die, and I'm also going to create a theremin. And all of the code, as well as the kit I'm using to create this whole entire tutorial, is found in the description underneath the video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circuit using a seven segment display, and basically, a seven segment display can represent individual numbers, as you may have guessed. And a common cathode display, which is what I'm going to be using in this tutorial, has all of the cathodes connected to ground. These are all LEDs. And you turn on a segment by supplying current to an anode. And basically, as you can see right here, the pins are labeled starting at the top left and then going clockwise, G, F, and then ground has to be connected, both the grounds on the top and the bottom. And then A, B, D, P, C, ground, and D, E. And the DP in this situation is going to represent a decimal point. And the way these guys are set up, we're going to actually use a library to make it really easy. But if you wanted to actually send a current directly and then light different parts of this segment display up, basically A is going to handle the top part, F and B are going to handle the left and then the right of the top, G is going to be the center, E, C, and then D at the very bottom, and then of course DP is going to represent a decimal place. But like I said, we're going to use a library, and now what I'm going to do is jump over and show you the working circuit circuit and then I'm going to write all the code. Okay, so here's the circuit before everything's plugged in. We're just going to plug in some ports over there on ground and then you're going to put in one in ground, one in 13, and then in one, uh, two through nine you're going to also have little plugs inside of. Now because we're using LEDs we're going to have to have a resistor so we're going to connect to the ground there and then in the middle pin on the seven segment display we're also going to attach another ground and then the other ground from the seven segment display. And then to make our button work, we're going to connect the ground to the upper right hand of the button and then pin 13 to the left hand. Then what we're going to do is take the 9 pin and put it in the bottom right hand corner. And then across the top from left to right, we will then add in the 8, 7, 6, and 5 pins. And then in the bottom, we will add 4, 3, and 2. Of course, we are not going to be putting them in the ground or where we have our decimal place. And then after we have all that together, we insert the Arduino cord. We then upload our sketch, and then as you can see, I can press a button, it's going to cycle through a bunch of random values, and then pick a random value and display it in our seven segment display, and each time I hit the button, it's going to show a new random value. Okay, so now I'm going to jump over and show you all the code to make this thing work. All right, so now it's time to come in here and write the code for this guy. Very first thing I need to do is go and get a library, however. And how you get that is you come up here to Sketch, and then Include Library and Manage Libraries. And then this little guy will pop up here on your screen. And then you're going to click inside of here, and you're going to go Sev Seg which is seven segment. I already have it installed. If you didn't, then you would have to click on install to install it. And that's all we need to do to get that library and get that working. Now to include that library, it's gonna make life very easy. What we're gonna do is go save seg like this. This is all we're gonna to need to do. And then sev seg and sev and seg. And then we have the library ready for us. So now we have to think about the different constants that are going to be in our program. So we are going to have a button and that is 13 that we're going to be working with. And that's going to make it so whenever we click on the button, we'll be able to cycle through all the numbers as you saw previously. And also we are going to have to have a way of tracking our button state so that we know when the button has been pressed or not so that we can react to that and that's going to change of course so that's why it's not marked as a constant we're also going to track the last button state once again so that we can track it so that we know when it was pressed and when it wasn't pressed or when it was pressed again I guess I should say and that's all we need to do and here we have our serial monitor which we may use for debugging purposes and then what I'm going to have to do is set pin, pin 13 as an input from our button so that we'll be able to find a random digit and display it. So button pin, we are going to say we are going to look for input from it. 
And what else are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna create a byte. This is going to represent the number of digits on my display. And this is going to be a fairly common way that we're going to set this up because we're going to use all these different little pieces with our library that we just imported. And then we're going to have to define digit pins and this is going to be an array and this is going to be left empty for a single digit display. In the next part of the tutorial I'll probably go and cover multi-digit seven digit displays or whatever. Then what we need to do is create an array that's going to define which pins are assigned to each of the segments and then I'm referring to A through G and the decimal place. So date and segments, segments, pins, and there's that array, and that is going to be six, five, two, three, four, seven, eight, and nine. And like I said, I talked about that whenever I talked about the display whenever it was on the screen. Then I am going to create a Boolean and resistors on segments. And this is going to be set for true. And it's going to be true whenever the current limiting resistor is connected in a series, like we did with our one uh, kill ohm resistor that you saw whenever you saw the circuit that we created just a couple minutes ago. Then what I'm going to do is come in here and go byte and you need to go hardware config and mark this as common if you have the kit that I referred to then you're probably going to use common cathode otherwise you're going to use common anode and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say cathode and anode then you need to watch previous parts of this tutorial series which refer to the different parts of an LED then after I have that I can just go and call our seven segment object that we have here and go hardware config and it's going to handle setting up and initializing everything for us so digits and digits pins and segment pins and resistors on segment and these are just all of the settings that we just defined for creating this object and after we do that what you can do is uh, you can also come in and change the brightness if you would like on your display and it can be from 0 to 100 Let's just mark it as 90 because that's fine then I can also come in here and define the starting value that is going to display whenever the program starts and let's say I want to start it at zero, doesn't matter. And you can set it for anything, doesn't matter. And then refresh display is going to go and display the value on the screen. All right, so I have all of that set up. And then I'm going to go into my loop and set everything up so that whenever the button is pressed, it's going to loop through. So I'm going to go digital read and I'm going to wait for my button to be pressed as it's looping through here and then if it is disp or if it is clicked on I'm gonna check that I'm gonna go button state not equal to last button state so that means that the state of our button has changed for us and then I'm gonna say if button state is equal to high that means it is being pressed downwards. Then what I want to do is I want to first I want to print out a bunch of values on the screen to make it look as if we're cycling through numbers to sort of guess. All right so to do that I'm going to use a function and let's go and roll this up here a little bit. All right so I'm going to call it's not going to return anything and I'm going to call this cycle numbers and then to output a bunch of random values on the little display I'm going to start off with zero and then I'm going to go as long I'm going to go up as long as I is less than 10 so of course we can't print 10 out on the screen because we don't have a big enough display and then if I want to go and just change a value inside of it I can just go set number just like we did before except this is set number with a capital N and set number to I and then it'll give the appearance as if it is cycling through values randomly and maybe for homework you could come in here and actually cycle through values randomly and I'll show you how to generate random values here in a second and I'm going to delay for 200 milliseconds just so it is long enough for us to 
be able to see the values, otherwise they'll flash so fast you wouldn't be able to see them. And since I'm talking about random numbers, why don't I come in here and actually create another function that is going to gen generate a random number. So call that get random number. And first thing I'm gonna have to do is initialize a random number generator. And one way you can do that is with a random seed value that you can get from an unconnected pin. And they, as I have brought up in previous parts of the tutorial, have a floating value. So you don't know what it's gonna be, which makes it great for generating a random value. And you can just go analog read from an unused pin. You always wanna use an unused pin. And there you go. And then I can return a random value from zero up to, but not including 10. And there we go, got that all set. And I do not think I need any other functions. So let's come back inside of our loop area. So for our loop, if they press the button and they are holding it down, I want to call cycle numbers and it's going to just print out on the screen a whole bunch of random values. And then what I wanna do is display a random value after it's done doing all that. And how I do that is go sub segment, set number, and then I can go get random number and display it on our screen. And then I can go and call for the display to refresh itself. And I do that once again with refresh display. All right, and then um, anytime you use a button, you're going to have a situation which bouncing could occur where the, the connection sort of latches and unlatches and latches and unlatches as you are pressing the button down. So what we're gonna do is put a slight delay inside of here to prevent that from happening. And also I am going to save the current state as the last state so that we know when the button has been pressed again. So I'm gonna go button state is equal to whatever the current button state is. And we could save that and you can come in here and print something in a serial monitor if you would like. And that is all we're going to have to do to make that whole entire circuit work, which you saw previously. And if I went through that too quickly, of course, you can either pause your screen or get the code that is in the description, which is 100% free. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over and I'm going to show you how to build the theremin circuit. And here is a circuit layout for our theremin. And basically, we're going to use a photoresistor whose resistance increases with increasing light to send a different tone to the buzzer. And you're going to hear what that sounds like. And basically, what we're doing here is connecting our ground to, as well as our 5 volt to our Arduino. Now our photoresistor is in series with another resistor in a circuit that is known as a voltage divider and they are basically used to turn a large voltage into a smaller one and we have two pins here. Pin 11 is going to go into the side where we have our buzzer and then the analog pin 0 is going to go in the row with the ends of both of the resistors on our board. And I was talking about voltage divider and here is the formula you would use to figure out whatever the final voltage would be if you consider the two resistors you are using inside of your circuit. All right, and then we are going to upload our sketch and now you get to hear the beautiful theremin. Okay, so you saw how the circuit's going to work with the theremin, and now I'm gonna write all the code for it. So what are we gonna to need to do? We're all, we're going to create a constant reference to our uh, pin that we have, and that is going to be tied to an, our analog in pin. So A0 is how you reference that guy. And what else are we gonna use? Well, I'm also going to come in and have an output pin so that we can pass a tone to our passive buzzer. And that, as you saw, is going, well, let's, it's going to be buzzer out pin, and that was pin 11. And let's use a consistent thing here, so buzzer out pin. I'm also going to store a value for our photo resistor so that we can maybe display that on the screen so that we'll be able to see that. And also I'm going to of course have a tone value that we are going to put inside of our buzzer or we're going to pass to our buzzer. As far as I know, that's all I'm gonna need and I'm gonna be using this guy right here, so the serial monitor, so I'm gonna leave that inside of there. And then basically it's going to be pretty simple from this point on. So I'm gonna go photo r value is equal to analog 
read and then photo or pin pass out there and then since we now have that resistance we can go and print the resistance from our photoresistor so photo resistor and then we will do it once again print line and photo resistance value and this is very handy to do for debugging and then what I want to do is I'm going to have our tone value but one thing is going to be coming up here basically I'm going to be getting a value of 0 to 1023 from our input and as we had talked about previously in this tutorial series but I want to keep my range for the tones to be between 120 and 1500 so how can I do that without doing tons and tons of math well I can use map and basically what map does is you pass in a value so this value that we have right here is going to be between 0 and 1023. And I am going to say that I want to go and get the 0 to between uh, 1023. And I want to change it into the range between 120 and 1500 using percentages. And that's all I do. And it automatically fixes that for me. And then I can call tone and buzzer out pin and pass the tone that I want to play on my buzzer just like that and then I want to also throw in a delay here which is just going to pause the program long enough to get another sensor reading so we're going to use delays a lot and by the way this should normally end most of your loop functions and we can save that and we can come in and compile it and make sure it looks good. And as you can see, not only is the resistance being displayed here on the screen, you can also hear the most god-awful noise you've ever heard. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial series. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.